An immense river of wood flows through our global economy, but its source is not the ancient forest we imagine. Every year, humanity consumes over 141 billion cubic feet of this fundamental material. It forms the backbone of our daily lives, from the floors beneath our feet to the very structure of our homes and offices. This staggering demand presents a critical challenge, one that natural forests alone can no longer sustain. In response, industry has pioneered a more sustainable path, turning to the vast, untapped resource of discarded wood scrap to meet the world's needs. Here, forgotten fragments embark on a remarkable journey of renewal. Through meticulous processing, blending with specialized resins, and precise shaping, these remnants are prepared for a dramatic metamorphosis. Subjected to intense heat and pressure, the once disparate pieces are fused into solid engineered boards. This transformation yields a product of remarkable strength and consistency, ready for the demands of mass manufacturing and large-scale construction. It is a process where technical precision and thoughtful planning turn waste into a cornerstone of modern industry. It begins as dust and debris, the scattered remains of a forest. But in these facilities, it is the seed of something new. Every production cycle in the modern industrial ecosystem leaves behind a vast trail of wood waste. What was once dismissed as worthless, sawdust, shavings, and offcuts was often burned or buried just to clear the way, releasing emissions and polluting the soil. For the wood recycling industry, however, this is a valuable feedstock, ready for a new purpose. Worldwide, a staggering 44 million short tons of this material are gathered each year from sawmills, processing plants, and furniture factories. At specialized treatment centers, the raw material is first screened to purge it of metals, plastics, and other contaminants, then dried to achieve a precise moisture level. Careful classification of particle size establishes a consistent foundation, ensuring strength and stability in the final product. The impact of this recycling model echoes far beyond simple cost savings. If this material were left unused, the industry would be forced to harvest an additional 6.4 billion cubic feet of round wood every year. This prevents the loss of over 2.5 million acres of forest an area of over 4,000 square miles, nearly the size of Connecticut, an ecological toll that is not easily restored. Recycling is not just about managing leftovers, it is a circular model where value is preserved and waste becomes a resource. With the raw material now cleaned of all impurities, it is fed into powerful chipping systems. The objective here is to produce uniform wood flakes or fibers, creating an ideal structure for bonding with resin to form mechanically stable panels. The machinery used, whether drum chippers, disc chippers, or high-speed mills, is selected based on the desired outcome, be it particle board, OSB, or MDF. The input can be anything from short logs and cutoffs to broken boards and branches, Provided it is pure wood, blades forged from hardened alloy steel spin at speeds between 500 and 1,000 revolutions per minute, relentlessly cutting the material into standardized pieces, typically under 30 millimeters for conventional particle board. But this is far more than simple mechanical destruction. It is a process of precision. Particles that are oversized, thick, or irregularly shaped can create voids, leading to weak bonds or warping in the final panel. Conversely, particles that are too fine absorb excess resin, driving up costs while diminishing stability. To strike this critical balance, most chipping systems integrate vibrating screens immediately after the cutting stage. This allows for on-the-spot reclassification, where undersized or oversized material is sent back for reprocessing. Only the properly sized particles are allowed to move forward, advancing to the drying stage. A torrent of heat meets a cascade of wood in a delicate dance to remove the one element that could compromise everything. 
Once chipped to the correct size, the wood particles are swept into vast drying systems. Here, their moisture content must be meticulously lowered to an optimal level before the resin can be introduced. This step is absolutely critical, as it dictates the quality of the bond, the stability of the final dimensions, and the overall durability of the finished board. The target moisture level, typically between 2 and 8%, varies depending on the specific panel being created. Too much moisture prevents the resin from adhering properly, which weakens the bonds and can lead to blistering when the board is hot pressed. Conversely, if the particles are overly dry, they turn brittle, leading to material loss and demanding an excessive amount of resin to compensate. This delicate balance is achieved inside rotary drum dryers or through forced hot air where temperatures are precisely managed between 300 and 570 degrees Fahrenheit. Within these sealed chambers, a powerful stream of hot air carries the particles along, ensuring moisture evaporates both rapidly and uniformly. Though the entire process may last only a few minutes, it requires unwavering control over heat and humidity from start to finish. To verify this uniformity, the particles are immediately cooled and channeled through a series of inline moisture meters. If any batch registers outside the strict acceptable range, it is either rejected outright or diverted back for another pass through the dryers. This unforgiving quality check guarantees that only perfectly conditioned material advances to the next phase. Having achieved the perfect moisture content, the stream of wood particles now flows into complex screening systems designed for classification. The objective here is to sort the particles by size, creating uniform groups destined for the distinct layers of the final panel, from the robust inner core to the flawless outer surface. These systems are composed of multiple decks, each fitted with fine meshes of different sizes and vibrating constantly to sift the material. Any particles deemed too large are immediately separated and rerouted to the chippers for reprocessing. At the other end of the spectrum, particles that are too fine, essentially wood dust, are extracted from the flow, as they would otherwise consume excess resin and weaken the board structure. The material that passes this rigorous test is sorted into two main fractions, finer particles reserved for the smooth surface layers and larger ones designated for the core. This meticulous control over particle size allows for a more stable and efficient resin mixture, reduces material waste, and ultimately guarantees the bonding performance and mechanical integrity of the final panel. The scent of raw timber gives way to the sharp tang of chemistry. Here, countless wood fragments are about to be fused into a single unified whole once sorted according to size, the wood particles are conveyed into sealed mixing chambers. A fine mist of urea formaldehyde, the industry's most common binder, atomizes from high-pressure nozzles, evenly coating each fragment and preventing any clumping. The ratio of resin is meticulously managed, typically falling between 8 and 12 percent of the wood's total dry weight. For specialized applications, Additives may be introduced at this point, enhancing the board's resistance to moisture, fire, or fungi. As the process continues, the sticky mixture is carried onto a moving belt where it is carefully arranged in multiple layers. A thicker core is laid down first, followed by two finer layers that will form the board's smooth outer surfaces. Automated spreading systems precisely regulate the material's flow and density, ensuring the resulting mat has a uniform thickness and weight. This layered mat then enters a pre-press, where hydraulic rollers apply initial compression at ambient temperature. The main objective here is to lightly compact the material, flatten its surface, and expel most of the air trapped within its structure. This also allows the first delicate bonds between wood and resin to form before the mat faces the extreme conditions of the hot press. Although the pressure is significantly lower than what will be applied later, it is enough to temporarily lock the mat together. 
This stability prevents the layers from shifting during transfer and improves the final panel's structural integrity. Here, under a storm of heat and pressure, the panel's final character is forged. The pre-pressed mat glides into the hot press, a chamber where its ultimate mechanical strength and dimensional stability will be permanently defined. Inside, an intense combination of high temperature and crushing pressure compacts the wood particles while activating the resin's curing reaction. Temperatures soar to between 280 and 430 degrees Fahrenheit, while pressure climbs as high as 600 pounds per square inch. For two to six minutes, the mat endures this extreme environment, its duration dictated by the board's specific type and thickness. Within this crucible, the resin undergoes a profound change, transitioning from a liquid into a solid state to form a network of durable bonds, locking the compressed wood particles together. The entire operation is governed by a fully automated system where sensors meticulously monitor temperature, pressure, thickness, and speed. This digital precision ensures every board that emerges from the press possesses a uniform hardness, flatness, and stability. As it exits, the newly formed panel is still oversized, a deliberate measure to guarantee full coverage during compression. Before it can cool, it moves onward to automated trimming systems designed to shear away unstable edges. High-speed sliding blades, guided by pre-programmed settings, execute each cut with surgical precision. The panels can be trimmed to standard formats, like four by eight feet, or tailored for specific needs, whether as larger sheets for inventory or smaller pieces destined for immediate furniture production. This trimming also serves a critical function removing any outer edges that might have been unevenly compressed and mitigating the risk of defects in the final finishing stages. An inferno still rages within its core, but the panel's future depends on a sudden, violent chill. After being compressed and trimmed to their final dimensions, the boards retain immense heat, a latent energy that must be carefully managed. This next phase is not merely about lowering temperature, it is a critical process of structural stabilization designed to release internal stresses and permanently lock in the material's durability. In advanced facilities across the United States and Europe, this task falls to forced air cooling systems. Massive rotary fans cradle and turn each panel while it still glows with residual heat. Powerful jets of cold air are then blasted from multiple directions circulating evenly to ensure the entire surface is cooled at a uniform rate. All the while, a network of automated sensors carefully regulates air pressure and temperature, maintaining a delicate equilibrium between the hot core and the cooling outer layers. Any imbalance during this stage would cause uneven shrinkage, introducing permanent warping that no later process can correct. To further enhance efficiency and surface stability, some American plants even utilize sophisticated dual-direction cooling units. The intense focus chill is precisely what the material requires to shed its heat without fracturing its internal structure. By the time a panel emerges from the cooling unit, it has achieved complete stability, fully prepared for the finishing stages that await. From the calculated cold, the panels move directly into the sanding system, a series of machines that appear simple but function as the true artisans of the entire product. The rough surface of each board is fed through a series of high-precision sanding rollers, which spin continuously under tightly controlled pressure. With every pass, the outermost wood fibers are methodically stripped away creating a perfectly smooth and uniform finish. Beneath the line, high-speed dust extraction systems work in tandem, pulling away all the fine particles generated by the abrasion, which prevents heat buildup and keeps loose debris from scratching the newly smoothed surface. The sanding heads themselves automatically adjust to the thickness of every board, correcting even the most minute deviations left over from earlier stages. This step does more than just create a smooth texture. 
it is essential for ensuring the proper adhesion of the coating that will be applied next. If this surface is not prepared to exact standards, the final melamine layer could peel, streak, or crack over time, turning a finished panel into a defective product. It appears flawless, a sheet of engineered perfection, but even a single unseen imperfection can condemn the entire board, turning it from a finished product into costly waste. This is why quality inspection operates with the highest precision, governed by the most stringent standards. Each panel glides beneath laser systems, their beams meticulously scanning the surface for uniformity and hunting for micro-cracks invisible to the human eye. Immediately following this, random samples are pulled for a gauntlet of mechanical tests that simulate the stresses a board will endure in the real world, from bending and compression to twisting torsion. Sensitive force measuring equipment records every deformation in real time. This stream of data allows engineers to evaluate the panel's resistance to warping, its tensile strength, and the bonding integrity between its layers. These metrics are not only essential for immediate quality control, but they also enable factories to fine-tune the entire process if any deviations begin to emerge. The result is a product that reaches the consumer with optimal stability, consistent in its appearance and durable through years of everyday use. Once certified, each panel is transferred to automated packaging systems. Here, robotic arms rotate, grip, and stack the boards onto pallets in a pre-programmed order, an arrangement that minimizes any risk of shifting during transport a layer of polyethylene shrink film is then wrapped around the entire load, securing it while providing a barrier against moisture and dust. In many large-scale factories, robots also apply barcodes to each batch, linking production data directly with warehouse and logistics systems. After packaging, forklifts move the pallets onto waiting shipping containers, marking the start of a global distribution journey. Yet even in this highly optimized process, challenges remain. The plastic shrink films are notoriously difficult to recycle, and distant markets often require additional shockproof wrapping, which significantly increases packaging waste. To address this, some manufacturers in the United States and Europe are now testing fiber-based paper wraps or biodegradable films aiming to reduce their environmental impact while maintaining the same level of protection during storage and long-haul transport. What was once discarded is now meticulously engineered. The path from raw timber to finished board is a cascade of precise technical stages, from long-haul transport and storage to the final press, with every step governed by automation and real-time sensors. Within this cycle, wood fragments are no longer overlooked. These once unwanted pieces are completely restructured, forged into a material of high strength and geometric stability, prepared for direct use in construction, furniture, and large-scale manufacturing. Yet this material is more than the sum of its parts. It stands as proof of a different way of thinking about resources, where value is created not through new extraction, but by reorganizing what already exists. Behind every panel lies a complex industrial system still facing its own evolution. The industry continues to tackle challenges in conserving energy, reducing emissions, and improving resin technologies, moving ever closer to a truly closed-loop process.